I want to, dare I say it, change the world. <laughs> What were other theories that we thought before the Big Bang? My grandfather's time, and they had, you know, he believes that they were living in a time of extraordinary technology. They had railroad trains that were able to go a mile a minute. And that was this milestone, wow, pun intended. That was this remarkable achievement. The strong, everybody strongly believed that there was an ether that carried beams of light, that carried light and radio energy and so on. And then people started doing experiments on the speed of light and they couldn't find any ether. Mm -hmm. And then Einstein said, the speed of light is constant, it's the speed of time that can change. And that was in my grandfather's lifetime, it was my father's lifetime. Mm -hmm. So in our lifetime, just about 10 years ago, they go out to measure the rate at which the universe is slowing down. Because mm -hmm. everybody figured, <laughs> except it's in space, so it'd be, Everybody figured the universe would slow down because gravity would be holding it in, and everybody wondered if the universe was uniquely flat. This is to say it would extend, expanding asymptotically without ever reaching a finite speed. Mm -hmm. But they found out the universe isn't slowing down, it's accelerating, and nobody knows why. And you can throw around the term dark matter, dark energy. Okay, mm -hmm. hey, great. <laughs> but no one really knows what that is or how to get it in a bottle, if it's even possible. Is it even a meaningful question? There is a whole branch of physics or science that we may very well live through the understand, or at least the first understanding of. Mm -hmm. Furthermore, it is quite reasonable that in the next two years, the Curiosity rover driving around on Mars, let's say it's not likely, but it's hardly impossible, would find the spiritual equivalent of a layer of pond scum fossilized on Mars. Even more extraordinary, we would use the orbiting spacecraft on Mars right now to find this slushy outcropping where there's some super salty water that during the summer on Mars, on some uh, sun-facing slope, gets just a little bit liquid. And there's living things still living do 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 do. Then suppose there is life on Mars. Does it have DNA? So it is not crazy that life started on Mars when Mars was very wet, mm -hmm. three something billion years ago, and we are all descendants of Martians. <laughs> Talk more about the Planetary Society. <clears throat> the world's largest non-governmental space interest organization. So we have about 35 members around the world. We seek to do three things: we educate. We uh, create and we advocate. We have tried to put a microphone on Mars. Mm -hmm. And you can actually say we have put a microphone on Mars. It just crash landed on the South Pole, with Mars Polar Lander, uh, back in 1999. So we're going to try again. We are funding searches for near Earth objects, asteroid that would end our lives the way it ended the ancient dinosaurs' lives, mm -hmm. probably. And we are funding uh, uh, this system to push an asteroid with sunlight. Very cool. In, in the big picture, we want to take NASA, National Aeronautic and Space Administration, from an engineering organization to a science organization. I am an engineer. I'm I love rockets. Who doesn't love rockets? But the commercial companies that are developing rockets, with government support, these companies, it looks like, will be able to produce rockets more cheaply than NASA can. It's not because they're better inherently as engineers and sci rocket scientists. It's just that when you are gonna sell more than one every four years, you can lower the cost. Mm -hmm. There are just a huge number of launches that most of us don't even know about. Weather satellites, communication satellites, mm -hmm. global positioning satellites. Why, why is it you're doing all this? What's the overall goal for this? I want to, dare I say it, change the world. I do. Yeah. I want to enrich the life of everyone on Earth by knowing more about our place among the stars, our place in the cosmos, what I like to call our place in space. <laughs>